there are several routes by which to reach Kibo, or Ayuru Peak, the highest summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, namely, Marangu, Rongai, Lamoshu, Shira, Umbe and Makain. Being one of the most popular mountains in the world, roughly 30,000 trekkers every year try to reach the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. According to research published by the Climb Kilimanjaro Guide, the average summit success rate across all climbers and routes is 65%. However, summit success rate heavily depends upon what route is climbed as routes vary considerably in terms of acclimatization profile and duration. Climbing routes equals McCain equals, highly recommended for scenic value, great for acclimatization with lots of walk high, sleep low opportunities, challenging trek with stunning scenery through five diverse climatic zones, good opportunity to split pre-summit day climb to leave climbers rested before summiting, very popular trail, fully catered camping only, it takes six to seven days for climbing, the McCain route is probably the most popular route these days and is also called the whiskey route. This route is steeper than the Marangu and Rongai routes and physically more demanding and for that reason better suited for the more determined and fitter climbers. Equals Marangu equals, nicknamed the Coca-Cola route due to the older days when Coke used to be bought along the way and tea huts, often selected by unprepared, inexperienced climbers because of its reputation for being the easiest route, attributing to the lower success rate, the shortest and cheapest route, but less time to acclimatize. Therefore lower success rate, dormitory style accommodation in hearts, less scenic due to ascent and descent on same route. Equals Shira slash Lamoshu equals, high summit success rate. Good for acclimatization, especially on the longer itineraries, remote and spectacular, dramatic gorges and views of West Kilimanjaro, converges with Mikaim on day 4 at Barranco. Shira offers higher start point compared to Lamoshu and poorer acclimatization, fully catered camping only, the Lamoshu route approaches Kilimanjaro from the west. Rather than simply intersecting Shira Plateau, Lamoshu crosses it from Shira Ridge to Shira 2 Camp, in a pleasant hike. Climbers encounter low traffic until the route joins the McCain route. Afterwards, Lamoshu follows the same route through Lava Ta, Barranco and Barrefu, known as the Southern Circuit. There are several options to complete the trek over, 1, 7, 8, or 9 days, based on your experience. Equals Rongai equals, only northern approach to Kilimanjaro, offers a true wilderness experience on the early stages of the climb, very tough final summit night from the north, less acclimatization opportunities, less scenic and flat than other routes, although the scenery is not as varied as the western routes, Rongai makes up for this by passing through true wilderness areas for days before joining the Maranga route at Kibo Camp. Rongai is a moderately difficult route, and is highly recommended, especially for those with less backpacking experience. There are different options to complete the climb in 5, 6, or 7 days. 2. Equals Umbe equals, steep, short route with lower success rate, poor acclimatization because of rapid ascent, very remote and quiet, fully catered camping only, of all the routes, McCain is by far the most scenic albeit steeper route up the mountain. The Rongai is the easiest camping route and the Marangu is also easy, but accommodation is in hearts. As a result, this route tends to be very busy and descent and descent routes are the same. Although the Rongai route is a flatter walk, it offers less opportunities for acclimatization. The McCain and Lamoshu routes both allow better opportunities to walk high and sleep low, which is critical to avoiding altitude sickness. Equals Northern Circuit equals, longest route up Kilimanjaro, good for acclimatization, only route to traverse all of the northern slopes on a circumnavigation of the mountain, beautiful scenery from the western approach, fully catered camping only, the Northern Circuit is the newest route up Kilimanjaro and also the longest. The Northern Circuit takes a minimum of 8 days to complete but most operators offer the 9-day option. Because of its length, the Northern Circuit has the highest summit success rate. The route follows the same as the Lamoshu route for the first 2 days and then veers off to circle around the quieter northern slopes to the east side of the mountain. There are a number of route variations, 
but generally the northern circuit approaches the summit via Gilmani Euro unregistered trademark South Point before descending on the same route as the McCain and Lamosu. Climbing description The trek to Ayura Peak is considered to be a relatively straightforward endeavor. However, ample time must still be provided for proper acclimatization to prevent altitude sickness. The three shortest routes, Morangu, Rongai, and McCain, are less challenging and are often trekked by individuals with limited mountaineering experience. Some trekkers employ altitude sickness medication, including acetazolamide, but taking at least seven days is the best way to avoid altitude sickness as your body needs proper time to adapt and acclimatize to high altitude. Route travel times range from five to nine days to summit and return to the base of the mountain. Huts with cooking facilities, bathrooms, and electricity are available on the Maranga route, and camps with fewer facilities are available on many other routes. All huts and many camps have rangers stationed at them with rescue facilities. Trekkers on Mount Kilimanjaro typically have a support crew of guides and porters who are integral in helping climbers reach the summit. The size of the support crew depends on the number of trekkers in a group and is regulated by the Kilimanjaro National Park. Tour operators are expected to comply with Kanapa Guide and Portner regulations. A typical climbing group of two trekkers will have one guide, one assistant guide, six porters and one cook. Porters are responsible for carrying a trekker's gear as well as key items like tents, water and cooking supplies. It is customary to tip guides and porters at the last meal on the mountain or at the end of the trip. The tipping value varies depending on the number of days spent on the mountain and the number of climbers in a group. Summit attempts are generally begun at midnight so that trekkers can reach the rim of the crater to view the sunrise. Walking overnight also means the ground is frozen, making the going significantly easier. Trekkers on the Maranga route first encounter Gilman's Point on the rim of the crater, which is roughly a 1.5-hour hike from Uluru Peak. Trekkers who follow the southern circuit will reach the summit via Stella Point which is about an hour from the summit. Both these compare with the Rongai route where the trip from where you reach the rim to the summit can be over two hours making for a very long summit day. Another route is the Western Breach, which includes short sections of scrambling. The rock on Kilimanjaro though is highly fragmented and deaths from rockfall from above have happened. On all the southern routes and on the western breach climb it is possible to sleep overnight in the crater. This has three major advantages. First, you can summit during the day, avoiding the midnight rush. Second, you have time to visit the crater and explore the glaciers. Finally, you can get back to the rim very early the next day to see the sunrise. The third currency NGLE a glacier on Kilimanjaro is a remnant of the ice cap that once covered the mountain. These has retreated dramatically over the last century with over 80% glacial retreat. The glacier is named after Walter Furt Currency NGLER, who along with Siegfried Koenig, were the fourth to ascend to the summit of Kilimanjaro in 1912. At the summit, there is a sign posted by the Tanzanian government. The sign reads Congratulations! You are now at Uluru Peak, Tanzania, 5895 m. AMSL. Africa's highest point. World's highest freestanding mountain. It formerly had a fourth part of the sign, which read, one of world's largest volcanoes. Welcome. The sign is covered in travel stickers from past trekkers who have left their mark on the top of the peak. Near this famous sign is a box containing a log that many trekkers have signed. Trekking routes. Kilimanjaro has a number of official climbing routes. These are, Northern Circuit, McCain, Morangu, Rongai, Lundarossi Limosu, Umbwe, Shira, Mwekar. Equals Summary of Routes Equals, a three-dimensional Google Earth route map can be seen here. Equals Northern Circuit Equals, the Northern Circuit is the newest route on Kilimanjaro and takes 8 euro 9 days. It begins from the north then traverses nearly the entire mountain counterclockwise before approaching the summit from the east. This route offers diverse views, making a particularly scenic route. Being a lengthy, wilderness route, and the only route to cross the northern face, there is very little traffic on this route. 
its length means that it provides more acclimatization time than other routes. Registration for the route is at Lunderossi Gate, with the trek itself beginning at the roadhead at Limoshi Glades and following a little used track called Chambers Route. The route then follows around the northern face of the mountain, crossing the high desert plateau of Shira Caldera and passing Shira Cathedral to reach Moir Valley and then Buffalo Ridge. From here, the route climbs onto the saddle, a lunar landscape which stretches between Kibo and Mwenzi peaks. The overnight descent to the summit is made from school hut campsite to the crater rim at Gilman's Point, from where a trail leads onto the summit of Kilimanjaro at Aru Peak. Descent from the summit is made via Stella Point, Barefu Camp, and Millennium Camp, leaving the park at Mwekar Gate. Equals Limoshu Route equals, this is an unspoiled, remote, less used, and beautiful way up to the Shira Plateau. Trekkers sometimes use it to ascend the Western Breach Route or follow it with the Kibo South Circuit to ascend by the easier Barefu Route. The first day of the route hardly ever has any game animals, and armed rangers never accompany a group. The standard route takes seven days on the mountain, and is sometimes extended to eight days with a stay at Garanga Valley. Route Outline Drive from Moshiura Russia to Lundarossi Park Gate, two hours. From here a forest track requiring a four-wheel drive vehicle leads to Limoshi Glades, 11 kilometers, 45 minutes, and a possible campsite. Walk along forest trails to MTMKUBWA campsite 3 hours. The trail gradually steepens and enters the giant heather moorland zone. Several streams are crossed then it gains the Shira Ridge at about and drops gently down to Shira 1 camp located by a stream on the Shira Plateau, 7 hours. This campsite could be omitted. A gentle walk across the plateau leads to Shira 2 camp on moorland meadows by a stream, 4 hours. A variety of walks are available on the plateau making this an excellent acclimatization day. Continue east towards Kibo passing the junction, then east towards the lava tower. Shortly after this, you descend to Barranco Hut, 6 hours. A short scramble to the top of the Great Barranco and then a traverse over Scree and ridges to the Karanga Valley, 3 hours, beneath the ice falls of the Heme, Kherson, and Deccan glaciers. After climbing out of the Karanga Valley, the trail ascends a ridge to the Barefu Hut, a bleak location with little vegetation at. An early start for the ascent to the rim of the Kibo crater between the Redman and Ratzel glaciers. The last section before the rim can sometimes be snow covered and an ice axe or ski stick is useful for balance. At the rim, Stella Point is reached. From here, a further hour leads to Ayuru Peak, from where there are often fine views of Miru to the west and the jagged peak of Mwenzi to the east. Descend to the Barre Fuhut for a rest and lunch before continuing on past Millennium Camp down to camp at Mwekar Hut in the giant heather zone on the forest edge. Those with energy on the summit may wish to descend to the Reutsh crater and visit the ice pinnacles of the eastern ice fields. A three to four hour descent through forest brings you to the park gate. Equals McCain route equals, the McCain route as of 2006 is described here. The route is typically done on a six or seven day hike. The campsites and gates are as follows, McCain gate 5718 feet. McCain 9,927 feet, Shira 12,355 feet, Barranco 13,066 feet, Karanga, Barefu 15,239 feet, Mwekar 10,204 feet, Mwekar Gate 5,423 feet. One benefit of the McCain route is its quick rise to relatively high elevations, and a short descent to the Lava Tower site, before descending back to Barranco Camp on the same day. This follows the climber's adage climb high, sleep low, and helps altitude acclimation. The initial steep ascent also helps trekkers acclimatize better. The McCain route starts from McCain Gate and travels upwards through the montane rainforest, characterized by dense vegetation, a muddy trail, and short sections of steep climbs. The first campsite, McCain Camp is right after the dense tree cover in an area with lower but still thick bushlands. The second day continues through increasingly sparse trees and bushes into moorlands. The day finishes with Shira Camp, which is on a small plateau in the high moorlands, and features views of Kibo in the northwest and Mount Miru towards the east. 
white-necked ravens can be seen throughout the day. There is also a set of small caves a short walk from the campsite known as the Shira Caves. The third day starts in the moorlands and moves into alpine desert, with fewer trees and more rocks. The highest point is the base of the lava tower, after which the trail descends into the Barranco Valley. More vegetation is present in this zone, especially the area just before the campsite. This area is called the Garden of the Senecios, which features many of the huge Senecio plants. Shorter lobelia plants are also present. The fourth day starts with the ascent of the Barranco Wall, which is considered a scramble in climbing terms. The trail continues with many up and down sections across small streams and rivulets and finally crosses the Karanga River to the Karanga campsite. The fifth day follows the path up and across a rocky zone, finishing at the high Camp Barre Fu. Very little vegetation can be found on the inhospitable terrain. A field of sedimentary rocks litters the ground. The summit is usually attempted on the very early morning of the sixth day. Barrefu is also used as a summit campsite for the Umbo route. Trekkers typically take somewhere between five and seven hours to ascend, using headlamps and cold weather gear. Making the ascent on a full moon or shortly thereafter can make the head touch unnecessary. The first milestone, generally reached shortly after dawn, is Stellar Point, which is on the crater rim. Following Stellar Point, the trail continues for another 60 minutes to Uluru Peak, the summit. The descent back to Barrefu takes roughly four hours. Some trekkers scree slide down the slope, which entails skidding running down the loose gravel at medium speed. From Barrefu, trekkers typically take a short break, and continue downward through the alpine desert and ensuing moorlands to Mwekar Camp. The seventh and final day has trekkers continue through the montane forest and Wekar Gate. Troops of black and white colobus monkeys can often be seen in the dense growth. Detailed description. Equals Maranga route equals. The Maranga route is the easiest ascent of Kilimanjaro, although any ascent can be challenging. Climbs can be done over six days. It crosses the saddle, a five kilometers wide, high altitude, semi-desert that separates Craggy Muenzi from the main summit Kibo. From the summit, glaciers, screes, cliffs, Afro-Alpine moorland, and forests lead down to the cultivated foothills. The Maranga route is a favorite of local door operators as it's the shortest route and requires no camping gear to be carried. For this reason it is often the cheapest option. Because of its short profile, the Maranga route actually has the lowest summit success rate out of any route. Trekkers sometimes spend an extra day to acclimate to the altitude at Harombo Hut. Also, trekkers often start the final ascent to Uluru Peak early from Kibo Hut, because the scree is easier to climb when frozen, and dawn views from the crater rim are often spectacular. Route outline, drive to Maranga Gate. Walk through the rainforest to Mandara Hut, about three hours. Leave the forest and cross open more land to Harumbo Hut. Rest and acclimatization day at Harumbo Hut. Day walk to Zebra Rocks or to Mwenzi Hut. This day can be omitted. Walk through moorland then alpine desert to the saddle between the peaks of Mwenzi and Kibo. From here you will walk for about an hour to reach Kibo Hut. Very early start for the summit on steep scree up to Guildman's Point, which is on the crater rim. Continue around the rim to Eluru Peak, the highest point in Africa. Descend to Kibo Hut and then down to the thicker air and relative warmth of Harumbo Hut. Descend to Maranga Gate. Equals Rongai Route equals, route outline, the route described below includes the Mwenzi Tarnhut variation which is recommended for acclimatization. However, some tours skip this and proceed directly from Simba Camp to a third camp at around 3700 m to Kibo Hut, resulting in a five-day total trip. Drive two hours from the Maranga Gate to the Rongai Gate. Walk to Simba Camp at 2650 meters, 2.5 to 3 hours. The walk is initially through plantations then rainforest and finally bush country. Walk to Second Cave at 3450 meters. Three or one half hours. A gentle day through bush then heathers. Gentle rising traverse through moorland over several ridges to Kikilia Caves, 3,600 meters, 
Three hours. Moylan then screes to Mwenzi Tan Hut, 4,330 meters, 3 to 3.5 hours. Easy angled scree slopes lead across the saddle to Kibo Hut, 4,700 meters, 4.5 to 5 hours. Very early start for the summit on steep scree up to Guildman's Point, which is on the crater rim. Continue around the rim to Eluru Peak, the highest point in Africa. Descend to Kibo Hut and then down to the thicker air and relative warmth of Harumbo Hut. Descend to Maranga Gate. Climbers often omit the second cave during ascent, although the climb is more difficult. Equals Umpway Route equals. The Umpway Routes is often considered the hardest but most spectacular and direct way to reach Uluru Peak. Route outline: Drive to the Umpway Road head at 1,800 meters. The route initially follows a forestry track winding up through the natural rainforest. It then narrows and steepens to climb the ridge between the Lonzo and Umbwe rivers. The first campsite is in the forest by some rock overhangs at 2,940 meters. Shortly after leaving the camp, the forest ends and the path continues along a narrow spectacular ridge. Above, the sheer 1,000 meters of the breach wall appears and disappears as the afternoon mists roll up the Great Barranco. From the Umbwe Ridge the route descends slightly to the Barranco hut and the camp in the valley floor at 3,900 meters. From here the route parts. The traditional route continues north to climb the western breach from the Arrow Glacier camp. However, because of the high risk from falling rock, it is suggested to follow the route below. A short scramble to the top of the Great Barranco and then a traverse over scree and ridges to the Karanga Valley, three hours, beneath the ice falls of the Heme, Kherson, and Deccan glaciers. After climbing out of the Karanga Valley, the trail ascends a ridge to the Barre Fu Hut, a bleak location with little vegetation at 4,600 meters. An early start for the ascent to the rim of the Kibo crater between the Redman and Ratzel glaciers. The last section before the rim can sometimes be snow covered and an ice axe or ski stick is useful for balance. From here, a further hour leads to Uluru Peak, from where there are often fine views of Meru to the west and the jagged peak of Mwenzi to the east. After a short time on the summit, descend to the Barre Fu Hut before continuing on down to camp at Mwaka Hut in the giant heather zone on the Mwaka route. A three to four hour descent through forest brings you to the park gate. Climbing routes, costs, to climb Kilimanjaro you have to trek with a licensed guide. There is no option to climb solo. When you take into consideration, permit fees, park fees, camping and food logistics, the only realistic way to climb the mountain is with a tour operator. A local, no-frills operator on the short Moranga route will set you back between $900 US dollars $1,200. However, the short Moranga route is the lowest summit success rate and if you want to take a longer itinerary it will cost more. The 8-day Limoshi will cost in the region of $1,700 US dollars and the 9-day Northern Circuit route will cost between $1,900 US dollars $2,500. These prices are based upon local operator costs. Western operators generally charge more but usually offer a far better service. The quality of the tour operator is actually a very important factor as your safety is on the line throughout the trek. Unethical treatment of porters is also a big problem on the mountain and local operators are often the culprits, paying their porters below minimum wage and getting them to carry gear that is too heavy. Factors like this should be taken into account when booking as a Kilimanjaro trek is a fairly large investment and it's worth getting the right operator. Cost should only be one factor among many when choosing your route and operator. Rock Climbing Routes The rock on Kilimanjaro is generally unsuitable for rock climbing. However, there are several good snow and ice routes that are rapidly vanishing due to glacial recession. Mwenzi's peaks provide a few rock routes on loose rock. Until recently, glacial recession has made it harder to ascend the Umbwe route followed by the Heme Glacier. Just left of the glacier, the breach wall was considered the hardest route on Kilimanjaro. Further left again, the western breach route provides an easy scrambling route to the crater. Park authorities and outfitters require special arrangements and often disclaimers to climb these routes. Although it is only a scramble, 
the Western Breach Route falls into this category on account of rock fall danger. Equals selected rock climbing routes equals, Heme Glacier, and Nelson, H. J. Cook, D. N. Goodall, 1957. Grade 3 plus, 12 hours. Western Breach, Grade I, 6 hours. The easiest rock climbing way on the southwest side of the mountain. Rowenzi also known as South Peak, first climbed in 1924 by George Lont from South Africa. Other climbing routes, frequently ask Kilimanjaro questions and answers. References <laughs>